service accommodation is one of those strategies that appeals to so many people, especially when they're starting out. It's probably because they see the headline numbers are making a thousand pounds from a single unit that you don't even own. But is it a strategy that's still viable in 2022? I'm here with IDAS, my business partner, and today we're gonna to discuss exactly that. If you're watching my videos for the first time, my name is Saj Hussain, and on this channel, I share with you my 15 years of property investing experience to ultimately help you get further faster in your own property investing journey. Service accommodation is a strategy we've been running for a little while now, and in the business, we can probably accommodate about 200 people each night. However, it's just not been a bed of roses. Yeah, well, especially during lockdown, um, it hasn't been straightforward. Um, luckily, we're in a business where we can adapt. That's been the critical thing for us, where we had to pivot the business and adapt to the changes in the marketplace. Um, in particularly, kind of, we moved a lot of our uh, stays to corporate stays, working with uh, HS2, NHS, uh, you know, and all the other kind of blue chip companies really has allowed us to, to kind of make that pivot. Because otherwise, beforehand, we were really relying just on your typical Airbnb, booking.com guests, really. So yeah, yeah, we had to make some critical changes in order to survive and, and, uh, and grow yeah, the business I, further. I guess many people that use this model just rely on those two key platforms. It's either Airbnb, booking.com, all the business comes from them. And because they're the dominant players in the market, however, we realize that we shouldn't be relying on those platforms because ultimately what you're doing is putting all your eggs in one basket. And for many people, the last year, year and a half has been a time of pivoting and it certainly was for this business. Yeah, well, I mean, we've, we've seen unfortunately a lot of uh, operators um, pack in, give the properties back if they're kind of been on rent to rent leases. Um, fortunately for us, because we were building these strong relationships with uh, corporate clients, we were able to actually um, in, actually increase our business and actually add more units. Uh, in fact, we're actually helping out a few other operators mm -hmm. fill their units as well. We're taking them on from them as well. Um, so fortunately, it's been, it's been uh, we've kind of, with the changes we've seen, um, and we had to really knuckle down and sit down and say, okay, how we're gonna be first of all, survive this yeah. lockdown because, you know, Airbnb has kind of obviously changed their way of uh, allowing bookings, increasing the nights and just all the other kind of restrictions around that. Um, and obviously from our perspective was being compliant, making sure we're adhering to the regulations and, you know, um, so it's going to kind of really just understanding all of that and um, having the right team in place has really helped us to, you know, juggle things around and, and ride it out really, yeah. I think a key part of uh, any business is really knowing that who you create these products or services for. And as with many other people, we, we as we've said, we're relying on the big portals, but then realizing actually, you know, the relationship we built with people outside of those platforms meant that that's helped us continue. We also were doing some accommodation for NHA staff as well. Um, so the, just the idea of, look, things are gonna change all the time and we need to be able to adapt as things adapt. However, since we've come out of lockdown, we've never been so busy. There's just so many things going on right now. Yeah, with, with all the events uh, kicking back in, the National Exhibition Center, German marketing coming back in, and I think people just looking for more staycations, all the businesses are back up and running, and uh, more construction probably ever than before going on. Uh, so that's been really keeping our business pretty much at full capacity over the last couple of months, especially so obviously since the lockdown eased out. And, it's been it's been great um, and obviously now we're going to be moving into the new year a lot's happening then as well yeah particularly i think with the staycations that's been a booming market some of the people that we know that just do specifically holiday lets i mean i think birmingham is a great place for people to come and tourist in but you know i don't think it happens very much but people that have got specifically holiday homes they've just been absolutely booming with staycations but we have to remember things adapt and change as well. And you know, we've got a huge event happening next year in Birmingham, um, which potentially is something that's driving a lot of business right now. Yeah, well, the Commonwealth is coming up. Um, and uh, I mean, there's just so much money being pumped into the local economy. The government are spending nearly three quarters of a billion, yeah. which is just mind blowing really for, for an event that's less than two weeks. Yes, yeah, 12, 12 days of event. Yeah, it's, it's just crazy, it's phenomenal. And obviously the uh, um, British government are funding 75% of that and Birmingham City Council is 25%, which is just gonna be pumping a lot of money into the local economy. So people are even actually trying to build businesses around that event. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've got people talking about, oh, they wanna get service accommodation businesses up and running around the area where all the events are happening. And guess there'll be some benefit for people that are working in that construction space right now and doing all that development and doing that short period of time where there'll be people staying 
But then after that, what's going to happen? So it's important to think about businesses as a long-term thing and who's your long-term uh, client going to be for that particular product rather than, oh yeah, I can just benefit from this for, for six months or something. Yeah. Well, I've actually had, you know, we had people reach out to us as well and say like, well, Commonwealth is coming, coming on. Um, should we be setting up units around those areas? And, you know, and I'm thinking, well, yes, it's great, but it's only a few weeks. Like you yes. can't be setting up the whole business just around that. But I think you're right, you know, if you're focusing on more longer term projects, like for example, HS2, you know, kind of supplying accommodation for those kind of contractors or obviously people running up to the Commonwealth Games. And then obviously you've got to think what's going to happen afterwards because yeah, the yeah. market is going to change again. Um, yeah, so uh, absolutely. It's constantly changing. And, you know, the last few months have shown us that we've moved from, you know, we don't really know what's happening in the market. It's really slow to a booming, crazy market uh, as well. And, you know, we've not seen you on the channel for a little while as well because we've been busy <laughs> with your project uh, as well. And, uh, yep. You know, creating a, creating a new home for the family. Yes, yeah, so we've actually been vlogging that um, on my YouTube channel, so we can just put it yep, in the we'll, comments or we'll link that up below yeah. as well. So we've just been converting a, a three-bedroom family house into a luxury four-bedroom home, and we've been kind of vlogging pretty much every week or every two weeks the progress there, and um, doing a few other kind of videos, uh, all property related. So if you want to check that out, yeah, some really. great content. So I encourage you to jump across that channel as well and have a look at that uh, as well. Similar but different content on there too. Yeah. Hey, if you're enjoying this content, then you'll be pleased to know that Idas and I are going to be sharing a lot more of our knowledge and experience around service accommodation, how we built this business up to accommodate 200 people every single night. To make sure you be kept informed, all you need to do is like the video, subscribe to the channel, enable the notification bell, and that way, as and when we're sharing this content, you'll be kept informed and also some of the training events that we'll be running. Now, let's get back to that video. You know, with service accommodation as a business, so many people get excited about wanting to get involved in it and, you know, the high level numbers is what excites everybody. But so many people also get their fingers burnt as well. Yeah, well, I definitely think that 2022 is going to be an amazing year for service accommodation. But having that said, I think the right knowledge needs to be in place because people just jump into it too quickly without actually realizing all the work that's involved. Yes. It's not just a case of, oh, let's get a house set up and put it on the market. They, they say a little knowledge can be a dangerous thing. And I think that's absolutely true when it comes <laughs> yeah. to service accommodation. And I think the common uh, kind of mistakes we see people make is they, you know, jump into it too quickly without the right business fundamentals for it. So, you know, you need to make sure you have the right systems in place, the right processes. Um, and you also, you know, they don't really adapt the properties or they don't think enough about the end user who's yeah. going to be their market target um, and you know it's important to kind of think about it when you're setting up the property so then you're kind of focusing on a specific market and yes so you, you know you'll you'll work with different markets as well but you have to be specific really on who you're it's getting those basic fundamentals right of right what am i creating and who am i creating it for exactly and getting that right as well and i think the other thing, important thing is obviously you know it is a business ultimately you're trying to build, so it's having the right team and, 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 the, and the people around that, yeah. Yeah, and I guess one of the things that we've uh, benefited from is as we've grown the business, because we were quite cautious in starting this, we didn't rush into this yeah. business, we took our time, and you know, we've done a lot of research before we made the decision, right, what type of a service accommodation we're gonna do, where we're gonna do it within the city, and before we actually go up and running. And the idea of keeping properties close together means we can build a team uh, around that as well. And the team is gonna be a key aspect in terms of growing and scaling it business yeah. and I think it's just efficiency and economies of scale more than anything as well so we we kind of build clusters of units in the same postcodes in the same area so it allows us to kind of you know get the cleaning teams in place in and out quickly we can move the guests around if there's any issues or you know if there's anything that we need to kind of you know move around as well or if there's larger groups um, so I think it's understanding that you know don't do a scattergun don't kind of just take you know five different properties around um, and most of all don't scale too quickly just you know get the processes going and I think that's you know really important yeah so an example of that is for you know let's say you've got a great housekeeper who goes in and does a changeover for you and you've got an apartment in the city center then you've got another um, uh, one in South Birmingham the changeover is gonna happen at the same time so how's that person gonna run across from one side of the city to the other to do that changeover at the same time and when you start building that and there's lots of properties it just it just doesn't work yeah, no, 100%. And I think that's, you know, that's, that's where we kind of focus yeah. really well. And I think what we're looking for at the moment as well is actually more of similar properties that we've got. So more kind of multi-units, uh, potentially 
old B&Bs or yeah. many hotels. Yes, yeah, small, small old, old hotels, bed and breakfasts, and anything that um, you know we can have multiple units, one place, small block of apartments, you know, 20, maybe up to 30 units maximum. So effectively, that we can we can use that economies of scale and have them in one place. And we open to looking at purchases on those, long leases on those, and even joint ventures with the owners. We're quite flexible, and uh, you know, in making it work for everybody as long as it's a viable, a viable project. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think one tip from this as well for you guys if you're looking to potentially start a service accommodation business is um, potentially look at um, units where you could acquire more units as you grow. Yeah. Um, so whether it be like a, a landlord who owns 10 apartments in the same building potentially or, or things like that or like, you know, so I think because that, that's where we kind of start. We started with a smaller block and we started only letting a portion of it yes. and as we saw okay this is actually working we're kind of proving our concept then we started adding more of the units in the same building and then we kind of start taking other buildings around or, or building buildings uh for for kind of you know specifically purpose built for that yeah hey if we can help you in any way then feel free to reach out to us on social media and of course you can come and meet us as well at our monthly property meet which is back up and running from november 21 and if you've really enjoyed this content then you're going to like this video we've got over here for you which was a breakdown of some of the challenges that we had as lockdown started happening in service accommodation and don't forget to click on my face down here to subscribe to the channel and i'll see you up here on this video